What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. Today, I've got my hands on a brand new streaming device. This is the latest Tox 3 TV box. With an interesting, well-ventilated design and it's priced around 50 pounds or $55 in the US. Now, first of all, inside the box, you will find a user manual, an HDMI cable, a power supply, this comes with a standard infrared remote control and it is powered by two AAA batteries, not included. You're also getting an external Wi-Fi antenna and last, but certainly not least, the TV box itself. So here it is guys, the Tox 3 TV box. Now, first of all, let's run through the specs. So this box is powered by the S905X4 quad core clocked at 2.0 gigahertz. For graphics, we have the Mali G31. You've got four gigs of LPDDR3 RAM, 32 gigs of eMMC storage. There is a micro SD card slot and it supports up to 32 gigabyte cards. This has a five gigahertz Wi-Fi and gigabit LAN. You've got Bluetooth 4.1. This is running full Android version 11, supports HDMI version 2.0, supports 4K at 60 FPS. AV1 Kodak is supported along with 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound. Closer look at the box. On the front, we have an LED display. On the side, we've got some ventilation and an external Wi-Fi antenna. On the back, we have a power socket HDMI port and your gigabit LAN. If we keep going, you've got USB 2, USB 3 and a micro SD card slot and a bit of ventilation on top. And that brings us back to the front. And this is what the bottom of the box looks like. So you can see there is a small reset hole at the bottom and you can see more ventilation. So this box looks well ventilated throughout. Um, can't wait to see how this one performs. So without any further ado, let's get this hooked up to my TV and capture card and find out exactly how good the Tox 3 really is. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this TV box took 28 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And here we have the colorful home screen with fixed large shortcuts which cannot be changed. You have your local time and date in the top right hand corner and a section at the bottom which can be customized with your favorite apps by just hitting the plus sign and selecting your apps. It's also nice to see that we do have a black navigation bar at the bottom which you can simply click to hide or swipe up to bring it back. Now, if we head over to the main system settings, go to device preferences and check out the system storage info, you will see that this box has 32 gigs of internal storage with 27 gigs free to use. And I also have my 64 gig USB flash drive connected to the USB port three, which we're gonna use for our 4K tests very shortly. Now, if we have a quick look in about, you will see that this box is running full Android version 11. And here is a bit more information on the build and kernels. And you can see that it's quite easy to activate USB developer mode. Now, while we're here, other features to mention, if we go into input and devices, you can see we have HDMI CEC and also mouse settings. So you can speed up your mouse pointer or have an extra large pointer size. Other cool features to mention, we have automatic frame rate which is off by default. And here are the options if you wanted to switch it on. Now it's nice to see that we do have a real time hardware monitor, which will show you various system stats on the top status bar. And this can be quite a useful feature for some people. You also have a choice between two home screens, the Tox launcher, which you've just seen. And there is also an option for a desktop layout UI. So two options are there for you to choose from. And you also have a choice for your voice searches and Google is gonna be the obvious choice for most of us. Next up, power settings. So you can change things like what the power indicator on the front of the box does. You can also customize the front LED display, turning it off totally, dimming the display, or even adding elements like CPU temperature, frequency, and display mode. And you can also customize power key and timer action. And right at the bottom, we have something new, maximum performance mode. And when I switch this on, notice at the top bar, the CPU speed at the top basically maxes out and stays on the maximum level. So you are basically locking the CPU at its top speed. Now that explains the extra ventilation going around the box. I'm definitely going to keep this on throughout this review so you can keep your eye on that hardware information, the CPU temperature, etc. Very helpful feature. Let's see what happens. 
and the icing on the cake is of course super user is available so you could root this box at a flick of a switch if you need to if you don't want to root it you can leave it right alone so a very feature packed box with lots of options and tweaks that you can play around with i've showed you some of the main ones but there is a lot there now let's have a look at the complete system apps here are all the apps available on this box as standard i have not installed anything yet these are your default apps and you have quite a few apps to get you started, including YouTube, Airscreen, you've got Miracast, and you've got the full version of the Google Play Store. So you can go ahead and download all your favorite games and apps. So now I'm gonna play some 4K video samples from a USB drive, and I'll be doing this with the included Movie Player app. So let's begin with the usual high bitrate Jellyfish demo. And as you can see, 160 megabits per second video is playing absolutely fine with no issues. I also tested the 180 megabits per second Jellyfish demo, and that also played smooth, but unfortunately, 400 megabits per second struggled with this box. So next up, I'm testing a few 4K60 files with various HDR formats. And you can see the videos are playing back absolutely fine. The colors and contrasts also look really good. And I'm also testing out an AV1 clip. So this clip is 1 minute 26 seconds in length and the file is under 20 megabytes in size. And you can see the videos playing back absolutely fine. Now it's time to test out screen mirroring. I want to start with Miracast, which is screen mirroring for your Android devices. And I tested this with my Poco F4 GT. Still loving that phone, by the way. And you can see screen mirroring is working absolutely fine with minimal lag. This box also comes pre-installed with AirScreen, which is screen mirroring for your iOS devices. And I tested this with my iPhone 14 Pro. And as you can see, it's quick and easy to connect and works absolutely fine with minimal lag. So this box supports screen mirroring for both Android and iOS devices. So moving on to the YouTube test, and you can see maximum streaming quality supported is 4K60. So let's go ahead and play a few YouTube trailers. No! You have 300. But I never got a chance to prove that. That's cute. Take one gal or town. Now, Netflix was not available to download from the Play Store, but I was able to download it from the Aptoy TV Store. But unfortunately, it's the version of Netflix that requires a mouse to operate and it's limited to Netflix in SD quality. Come on, Banjo. We're gonna get a bit of bait here. And you're getting the same with Amazon Prime Video, maximum SD quality streaming. All right, so we're moving on to some gaming, starting off with Beach Buggy Racing 2. Now it's time for some emulation just to put this thing through its paces. I tested out PSP emulation with PPSSPP and we're playing Tekken 6 1X native resolution Vulcan backend and I guess it's playing okay. But then I tested God of War and this game as you guys know is quite taxing on the graphics and you can see that this box struggled to play this game even at 1X native. Now for you advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine level 3 and here is CPU Z where you can check out the clock speeds and you can see all four cores are still locked to the maximum 2 GHz and we do have the Mali G3 1. This box is running Android 11 and you do have a root switch in settings so you can decide whether your box is rooted or not. In the Wi-Fi speed test, we achieved download speeds of 61 and upload speeds of 15 megabits per second. And these are typically the top speeds we achieve in our office. 
So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 142 and multi core score of 500. And in the Antutu benchmark test, this box achieves 102K. So let's see how that compares with the others. So here is my top Android TV box performance chart of 2022, showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. The ranking is also based on Antutu benchmark scores. And based on that, you can see the Tox 3 takes position 11 on this chart with a benchmark score of 102K. Now I've also given this box an overall rating of four out of five. So from this chart, you can see the performance scores and my overall rating, and it's all color coded to make it more easier to read. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online and free of charge at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new Tox 3 streaming box. And here are my thoughts. For the price, the performance is very good. Android 11 with a fast and clean UI. You're getting a lot of customization options. You're getting multiple home screens, lots of tweaks to play around with, including a root switch. This box handles 4K playback from USB pretty well, and every video format I tested worked fine, although I did have to install VLC player for better playback compatibility. Streaming 4K content on YouTube was a decent experience, Netflix and Prime also work pretty well, although limited to SD quality. Android games played pretty well. You can play more or less any Android game from the Play Store, but if you try to push this box with emulation, you will notice that PSP games, some PSP games struggle, and that's even with the CPU maxed out constant. Other than emulation, everything else I did on this box worked really well. Fast performance throughout, a few caveats to mention apart from Netflix and Prime, there is only one USB 3 port, two would have certainly been nicer than one. Bluetooth 4.1 should really be discontinued and I think Bluetooth 5.0 should be the absolute standard minimum expected in all technology products. So bottom line, for under £50, this is still a very good full Android TV box to consider. It's great for your everyday streaming, it's even better for internet TV streaming. The performance means everything is generally snappy in operation. There's no waiting around for videos to load or any buffering issues. It's basically instant playback. Remote control works okay. It's responsive enough for an IR remote control, but some of us will probably prefer a Bluetooth remote or even attach a wireless mouse and keyboard. At least the options are there. Now I hope you found this one useful. Thank you so much for watching and do hit the like button to support the channel or better yet, join me on my journey by subbing to the channel if you have not already. Memberships are also now open with lots of extra perks, content and freebies and lots, lots more. And a big thanks to everyone who has supported the channel so far and I'll definitely catch you all in the next one. Peace.